Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Managing Your Sales Pipeline in Applied Epic. We are so glad you're joining us today. For those of you joining us today who may not be familiar with Kite Tech, technology. We are a managed IT services provider and consulting firm servicing independent insurance agencies across the country. What sets Kite Tech apart from other IT providers is our expertise with insurance and the fact that we offer agency consulting services. Many of our staff have previous backgrounds working in the insurance industry, giving us that extra insight on what agencies need today for operating at a high level. We find that most agencies underutilize Applied Epic and don't take advantage of the time-saving features that it offers. So our consulting division helps agencies learn how to use Epic more efficiently so that you can get the most from your investment and improve your agency's performance. Kitech has been around for more, than for more than 28 years, and today we are proud to support more than 3,000 end users across the United States. You can see our IT and consulting services listed here. Please feel free to reach out at any time during the webinar if you have any questions. And with that, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Aurora and we will see you a bit later for questions. Aurora, it's all yours. Okay, thanks for joining us this afternoon. My name's Aurora Berg and I've been with Kite Tech for a little over five years now. To give you a little idea about my background, I was on the agency side as the director of operations. I was also the director of marketing and the commercial lines manager. And I was a producer and I worked for an MGA. On the carrier side, I did sales for a very long time. And then I was the marketing rep. I did claims. I was a manager and I was an underwriter for a brief time. And then I also worked for Applied Systems. I was selling Epic when it first came out. And then I moved over to be a product instructor and then a consultant. So that kind of gives you my background. I'm going to turn off the webcam now, if I'm not technology challenged, and I'm going to start the presentation. Okay. So, the reason that you have, you have sales automation already built into Epic, it's called opportunities, but it needs to be set up. So if this is something that you have never set up to before, um, you know, this is an opportunity for you to test it out. So if you do that, um, what we're going to learn today is how to standardize your sales automation, what you should consider when you set up the configuration, what dashboard metrics and sales reports you can get. I'm going to do a demo to show you exactly where these areas are in your Epic system. And then we're going to open it up for questions and answers. OK, so the whole idea of using a sales pipeline is to standardize your sales process. OK, and so my first question to you is, what is your sales process? And the definition of a sales process is a repeatable set of steps, okay, that you do to go from prospect to client. And if you have some sort of systematic approach, then you can enable your sales force to close more deals, to increase the sales margins, and to get more referrals. The best way to do sales is to build such a contact force and such um, centers of influence that you're just working basically through referrals, you stop the cold calling. The better you get at this, the less cold calling you're going to be doing. Okay, so a sales pipeline, just short review for that. You have a sales goal, and I'm just going to pick round numbers because I'm mathematically challenged, especially at two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you want to set your sales goal. Let's say it's 100,000. Okay, you want to work your leads. You want to identify what opportunities you have over the next couple months. And then you want to manage those opportunities. And that's what the sales automation, the opportunity piece in Epic allows you to do. It allows you to manage these opportunities. Okay. So when I said a formal sales process before, some, some of you have sent your producers through a formal selling school sales process. So when I worked um, a long time ago, when I first started, I worked for Xerox and they took me through the spin selling situation, which is situation problem, implication need. 
okay? And then they had the professional sales skills. So that's just an example of a formal sales training program. Later on, I did the CIC Dynamics of Sales, which some of you may have done to get your continuing ed credits for CIC. There is a Sandler sales system. There is a couple of our clients use Richardson's consulting selling skills. So these are just examples of some of the sales processes that are out there. Now, if you have spent the money and sent any of your producers to any of these, you're gonna to wanna to mirror the stages in Epic. So if they called it prospect, you're gonna to wanna to call that stage prospect, okay? The workflow for the producer looks like this. They have to add the prospect into Epic and contacts, okay? Then they add their opportunity and they manage this opportunity. They take it through however many sales stages you have set up. And then at the end, they close the opportunity and they say whether this has been won or lost. And if they lost this opportunity, they tell you why. Sale uh, pricing was too high, not enough time, couldn't find a market, whatever you wanna track. And all of these reasons are trackable in opportunity reports in Epic. Okay, and there are four of them. We're gonna go over them a little later. Okay, so some of the configuration considerations. Okay, so if you don't have a formal sales manager, who is going to be the point person to be the sales manager? Okay, and each stage, um, you can, well, you can set up groups that represent your agency. So a typical agency usually has personal lines, commercial lines, and benefits. So that might be your three sales groups, okay, if you want to have different stages for them. What sales stages represent your sales process? Um, if you have not changed what came with your Epic setup in Configure, there's about eight or nine sales stages because Applied uses solution selling. That's the formal sales school I went through when I worked for Applied, and that's how many stages you have to move it through, okay? Um, do you want to customize your opportunity and successful reasons? Are you tracking certain things? Okay. And how do you set up sales teams? We're going to talk about that. What activities do you want to set up? Um, that becomes a discussion because some people don't want to set up too many activities. They just use the first one that opens and they just put all their notes in one. That way, when you go back to it next year, all of your notes are in one area. You don't have to see the four other things that may have opened when you went through the opportunity stages, okay? Um, do you need to add agency-defined categories? Well, you might. Agency-defined categories can be held at the account level and can be held at the policy at the line level. So it depends on what you wanna track. So for example, an agency-defined category, if you have people that you want to send a newsletter to or you want to send a holiday card or a holiday gift, you can use that as an agency defined category and put it on the account if you're going to run account based reports or put it on the policy in line if you're going to run book a business or anything from a policy based report. Okay. Do you want to add additional policy sources? Well, if you're tracking where these leads are coming from, you're going to want to set up policy sources. Okay, and what security options do you have to consider and user options that you have to customize? And the reason we want to customize some of the user options is so that you don't have to do as many clicks. So if we set this up correctly for the salesperson, they only have to basically fill in six fields on the opportunity screen because everything else will be defaulted. Okay, and what sales goals do you want to have? Okay, so this is what comes with your EPIC. If these are the stages. The first stage is unqualified. The second is qualified, and then you move it through. There's some interest. There's discovery where you're gathering all the underwriting information. Now you're validating it. You're getting loss runs. You're getting financials. You're getting um, the key underwriting information. Now you're sending it to the carriers to quote when you're in the marketing stage. You have a 60% chance of getting this at that point, okay? And then you're doing a proposal and you're recommending coverage, the carriers and the pricing. And now you're negotiating, you're trying to get the closure, okay? So that's what comes with Epic and that's based on solution selling. Now, 
When I was sales manager in an agency, I could not get my people to move it through this many stages. So we just looked at the stages that we were really running reports off of, which for us were three to four stages. So again, this depends on how many stages you can get your people to move it through. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple examples of what some other agencies have done. Okay, so one of the clients that we work with was doing the Richardson Solution Selling Program. And the terms that they use for their stages are prepare and connect, discover and understand, recommend and propose, and then negotiate and get commitment. And these are the sales stages and your percentage of closing that sale at each stage, okay? Another one wanted to do five stages. It goes from suspect to a qualified lead, to being marketed, to doing the proposal, to getting the signed agreements and payments, okay? And then this is another one. They had five stages also, but they called them different things. They called lead, they called it qualified prospect. There was a discovery where they got all the underwriting information. There's a presentation of the quotes and there's negotiation, okay? And then here's just another example, a simpler one with just four steps, suspect, prospect, discovery, market, present. Okay, so I just show you all these different examples to show you that most people went anywhere from three to five stages instead of having eight. It's just easier to get people to move it through. Okay, so when you're setting up sales automation in Epic, after you've made all those decisions, you have to do it in a certain order. And this is the order you have to do it in. You have to identify who your sales managers are and the executives. And the reason you're doing that, because sales managers can see their whole team. The executives can see all the teams. So the executives would be like the principal or the owner, the sales managers, and then the producers. That's the order it goes in. Okay. And then you create the sales teams in configure. That's under account. And then you create the opportunity stages. That's in configure under account. And then you create unsuccessful reasons, same area. Then you set up events and activity codes, and that's in configure under activity, okay? Then you set your sales target. That is done on the employee file. So for each of your producers under that sales tab, that's where you set up the sales targets, okay? My example was 100,000 in new business. So set up the sales automation security options because now you have to give them rights to certain things like opportunity area, um, the dashboard so they can see it on their home base, okay? And then you wanna set up their user options and that's going to configure the last one on the left, which is user options and you go into field defaults and you default your structure, which sales group you're in. That way you don't have to keep filling that out over and over again, okay? The dashboard and metrics that you get you get four reports and you get a dashboard right on your home base, which allows you a picture of how you're doing every time you sign into Epic. Okay. So the four sales reports that you get, you get a forecast report. And this is what do you think you can close in July, August, September? So now you have numbers that you can plan against, okay? Hit ratio report. This is your opportunities. When you close them, you close them as one, or lost and the reasons for it. So if you have a 50% hit ratio, you know you're gonna have to do a lot of cold calling because you're only closing 50% of those sales. If you get up to like a 90% hit ratio, you don't have to do as much cold calling and you're probably doing most of it from referrals at that point, okay? The pipeline report, what opportunities are in process? And this is what you usually use at your sales meetings. And this is the report that we recommend you put on each producer's report quick view at the bottom of the home screen. So they can just click on it anytime and see how they're doing today. Today at two o'clock, today at five o'clock, you know, depends on how often they want to go into it. And then the last one is your sales report, just gives you your current sales per employee and your targets and shows you where you are. Okay. So this is an example of what the forecast looks like. You get the account code and the account name, okay? You get the description. So you want them to put in what types of policies they're going after. And then you get the target close date. This is your opportunity to either use the date, effective date, or the date you think you're going to bind this, okay? And then what stage it's in, 
what probability that stage has, and then how many days, hours, and minutes has that been in that stage? Okay, so now you can see how long it's getting stuck in qualified lead or apps received or marketed or whatever stages you, you chose. Okay, and what the premium is. And then there's some other things that you can add in if you don't see everything that you need. The hit ratio now will tell you again, premium, revenue, estimated premium. It'll also give you a description of what account you're going after. And then did you win it? Did you lose it? When did you close it? How many days was it open for? Okay, so that's what you're getting out of this report. When you do your pipeline report, this is going to show you who owns that, what the description is, what policy it is, when they think they're going to close it, what stage it's in, what's the probability of closure, how long it's been in that stage, what the estimated premium is, and what the estimated revenue is. Okay, and the last report is the sales summary report, and that gives you everything that you need. You can do it over what you did in January, February, every month of the year. You can do what it is compared to your target premium, the net premium, your revenue premium, what stage it's in, what the description, what policies they are, which accounts they are, and which producer is doing it. So those four reports are really valuable. Okay. So the last thing I want to cover before we go into Epic and start looking at some of these areas are your activity options. Now you have your opportunity, but you can make it kick off um, an activity automatically open. So like most of you, when you add a policy in Epic, you get an APOL for add policy. Well, when you add an opportunity, you get an ADOP, add opportunity. And you can put all your notes in that and keep that one open. We can put all the other three that might come up in the background. By putting them in the background, that allows you to track when it was done, but they don't have to put notes on it because you want all their notes in one area. You want all their notes on that first one that opens, okay, that ADOP that opens. That way they can look at all their notes in a single glance instead of going from activity to activity to activity trying to follow what happened because they're going to look at this next year when they lose, if they lose it this year, okay? So you start the new activity on the lost business. You can make that a prospect for next year. So I didn't get it this year, but in six months, I'm gonna call back on them, okay? You can have an opportunity per stage. You can have an opportunity per stage. It generates another action. It sends a letter, it sends a reminder. It opens another um, activity. And you can have one activity that holds all the documentations. I really do recommend simplifying this because we're dealing with producers and they are not the most detailed people, okay? So you wanna make it really simple so they're using this so that you get accurate information. And I feel comfortable saying that since I was a producer and I can say that, not the most detail oriented. So I'm gonna stop here for a few minutes and take a couple of questions before we move on into Epic. So I'm gonna let Kelly see if there's any questions out there. You can do that in your question panel. Kelly, do we have any questions? Uh, yes, we do have a couple that have come in. Uh, the first one being, um, what if we don't have control to set, to set this up? Oh, great question. Okay, so. Somebody, whoever your Epic administrator is, would either have to set up a security group for you to have control to do that, or they would have to set it up for you. But it's whoever has rights to that area and configure. And don't forget, when you're setting up security in Epic, you don't have to make someone um, an enterprise admin for them to have rights and configure. You can set up a group called, you know, Enterprise Light or Admin Light and just give them a couple areas, or you can say Sales Setup and just let them go into those areas that they need. Great. And is this for just for commercial sales or is this also for personal as well? No, this is for any kind of sales. I mean, this can even be for, you know, for benefits, for personalized or commercial lines, for those of you that sell consulting services or loss control services, you can also use it for that too. Great. And then finally, will you be showing um, where and configure to set this up? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. I will take you through that. Okay. Great. So I'm going to continue. 
and then we're going to take questions again at the end. So right now I'm going to go into Now, you won't recognize, unless you have sales automation set up, your opportunity area, you won't get this dashboard. This is what it looks like when you set up your dashboard. Okay, the rest of it you're going to recognize. So, like open activities, you recognize that. And you have tasks and activities down here. You have your opportunities. This is a new area also. Okay, so you may not have that right now, but you will recognize report quick view the new one rating and the notifications. And all I did was move things up and down by using wherever I get the crossbar and I just move it up and down. So for most of you, the biggest area right now on your home base is probably your um, activities. But let me just move this over. You can also have this set up. So this tells me my combined sales, first 30 days, next 30 days, this tells me what my new business pipeline looks like right now. This tells me my new business compared to year to date. Now, as you notice, I did not set up a um, sales goal. If my sales goal was $100,000, this would be $100,000 and it would show me where I was moving toward. Now, I only set it up for new business, but you can also do it for renewal business. And when you start closing um, your opportunities, you'll have a hit ratio bar here. Now, for those of you that are managing it, you can see just one sales team. That's the Thunder sales team, or that can be the commercial line sales team. The Lightning sales team, which has nothing, okay? And then the Maverick sales team, which has some things. And then I looked at it from all teams as the principal or the owner, okay? Now, each of these things you can drill down into. If I double click on this, it drills down into all of the things that are making this up. If I double click this again, now I'm seeing individual policy descriptions and what accounts they are, when the target close dates are, how much revenue there's going to be, um, what group it's in, and what stage it's in. Okay, so all you have to do is keep clicking down and you can go right to, if you wanted to, right into that policy and see the opportunity that was set up for here. Okay, that's how far you can drill down into this. So on this one, let's take a look at the one that's already set up. When I said if you set up your user options and configure, this agency branch department profit center can be defaulted. So that is four things they don't have to click on. We can default this. If you're always part of the same sales team and you're always the owner, we can default that. So that's two more fields you don't have to fill in. Okay, so basically you're really filling in what accounts, what type of policies you're trying to sell. This gives me an idea of what we're looking at. We're trying to sell four policies here, okay? When do you think you're gonna close this? How did this opportunity come to be? How did we get it into the office, okay? what the SIC number is, and so now you can start tracking things like that. And then here, I mean, in a perfect world, we'd like them to fill out everything. But if you can't get them to fill out everything, this is the one you want to key in on, okay? So I can make that a required field. That's the one I want to key in on because think of this, 100,000 premium for a workers' comp that pays me 2% is not the same as a $100,000 premium for property that I'm getting paid 15%. Okay, so the, the um, equalizer on this would be the revenue, okay? But you can track premium as well, number of policies if you want, number of risk if you're doing benefits, number of client contracts if you're doing any kind of services, okay? And again, you can make any of these fields required or not required. It's up to you. It gives you the stage details here. It tells you when it was entered and when it was last updated and by whom. And if you notice, it's date and timestamp. And that's how it tells you how long it's been, you know, in this stage. So that's the first thing. If you have any business or contact information, I usually tell them to put it in the contacts here so that when it transfers over to the CSR or account manager, they also have that information. But if you want your producers to all work in the same area, it is in here as well. Any associated items, if they're also personal lines or bonds or something else, and then any attachments, because right now there's no policy to attach to, and they 
they only have one activity right now, the ADOP. So if you wanted to see the, the activity that's associated to this, remember your access bar, activities, open activities, you can use this throughout Epic. So this filter, so I don't have to look at 100 million activities, this just goes to my one activity that I got when I added my opportunity. And when you when you're highlight above here in activities, you can see, yes, there are attachments, there are no tasks, and there are seven notes. And it shows me my last note. And with any um, activity, if you want to see all the notes, just open it up and you can read them one at a time. Or my favorite is do view all notes and see them in order. So this is listing it in descending order. So my newest is at the top. If I wanted to read it in chronological order, just switch radio buttons, and that's in chronological order, okay? And you can print this up if you want to take it with you if you're the producer. So this is how we document it. Every time we talk to them, we met with the client, we got copies of policies, they're with Chubb, client's gonna request loss funds. We had the client sign a broker of record letter, okay? We met with our CSR and told them which carriers to send the apps to. Um, Hanover, one of the companies we sent it to, is requesting a loss control appointment. Okay, so we're going to meet them at that time. And then we got most of the quotes back, coverage is all equal. We're going to present these two quotes, Travelers and Hartford. And the uh, client isn't willing to buy any of the extra recommended coverages that we offered. So we're going to have them sign off on this, just say, We told you about these, you decide not to. We have them sign the apps, and then we give binding instructions, and we're done. And at this point, what we would do is we would close this activity. Okay, so actions close. Now, you have to decide, do you want to track off of, off of activities, which is the ADOP, or would you rather have them track off of closing this opportunity? So if I go back to opportunities and I close this opportunity, when I do, I get to say whether it's won or lost. And if I lost, I get to say the reasons. Buyer and selling, seller process were not, not aligned. That's a nice way of saying I came into it the day before it was effective, so I just don't have time, okay? I can't get the price in line. It's an existing client. I didn't realize that they were working with benefits. I didn't realize they were working with our other office, okay? I'm unable to achieve the adequate level of coverage. I can't find the reason. This means you did not qualify that risk really well at the beginning, okay? You did a lot of work, so you just practiced quoting is what you did here. Um, I'm unable to match the services that are currently offered by their agent or broker. I'm unable to obtain a market for this risk and or they won't tell me. Again, if you get the I won't tell you, um, you didn't qualify your risk up front. You didn't gain agreement. You weren't going to get this sale. OK, so those are some of the reasons that you can do and the date. And I'm just going to cancel out of here. So if I have to make a decision between making people Give me this information on an opportunity when they close it or doing an activity. I'm going with the opportunity because I'm going to be pulling sales reports. And this is what sales reports are based off of. So if you can get them to do it in both, yeah, hallelujah. Um, I couldn't get my salespeople to do it in both. I could get them to do opportunities because we were using those reports. They were using those reports. So we tracked it that way. So to add an opportunity, you just click on here. Okay, and you can do new business and renewal. You can save what you're doing or you can build it into your products. Now, if you want to track it this way, you can build that in configure. Your target close date, I usually use the effective date. This we should set up to default. This we should set up to default. And then I would key in on revenue and then this we can set up to default. So if you're personalized new business, if you're commercialized renewal business, if your benefits, if you're, I use the default group, because that's what came with Epic. But you can set up any group you want. If you have multiple offices, you might want to set up them based on location of the office or name of the agency if they have multiple names. So there's a lot you can do with this. To set this all up, I'm going to go into configure and show you the area that you would set this up in. And you would set this up in account. Okay. And if you scroll down in accounts, you would set this up under opportunities. So the first thing that shows is opportunity products. Notice you can add anything you want. 
and you can delete them once you don't want them, as long as no one's used it. If someone's used it, you disinactivate it, just like anything else in Epic, okay? Your stage groups. So this commercial new business went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stages. This personalized new business only did three stages. This default group did eight stages. So you can set it up for different groups to have different stages, or you can set it up for everybody to use the same thing and just have different groups. It's your option, okay? Now, when you do the stages, you have to assign it a probability. So you go in here and you say 10% chance of closing and what stage it is, and then you finish. And then you go through all here. Or you can use the ones they have set up for you. Okay, just remember when you set this all up, it's got to uh, make sense. Okay, this one doesn't, I think this one was played with, so it doesn't really make sense here. Oh, there's two that you have the same stage, different names, different sales programs. Okay, now your unsuccessful reasons, this is where you get to add them. Okay, you can't delete any of them, but if you open it up, you can change it by writing over it. Okay, and then your sales teams. So this is where you can get fancy names. Lightning, Maverick, Thunder. I have one agency that named them by rock and roll groups. Um, or you can name them by department. You can do personal lines, commercial lines, benefit bonds, you know. Okay, or you can do it by office, you know, the Philadelphia office, the Baltimore office, the Tampa office. So this is where you set that up. This is how you set it up and configure. The user options down here, let me show you this. Down here in the user options, this is where you set up your dashboard. So if you customize your home base and you want to see dashboards, you check this. If you want to see the opportunities, you check this. And then that'll give you, um, let's scroll up, whoops. Lost my pace. Okay, so this will go, if I go back to home, this will give you back, back. Okay, this will give you your dashboard. Okay, this will also give you, if you scroll down here, your opportunities. And you can see the next 30, 60, 90, 120, 150 days. Okay, so that's how you set that up. If you go back into configure, um, you can click on this and click on this, and now you have your dashboard. So when I was saying about user options, if you want them to only have to fill out six fields, you go into field defaults. And you should do this regardless if you're setting it up for opportunities. If you never got around to setting this up, this saves your people, producers, CSRs, managers, a lot of clicks. So for example, in the opportunity ad workflow, because we're talking about sales automation, I'm gonna open it up by hitting the pencil and I'm gonna say, the agency, I'm always part of insurance solution advisors. I'm always out of the Kenosha branch. I'm always commercialized. And I'm always part of the large commercial profit center. And then I am always in the commercial lines new business group. I always start with stage one. I am always part of Brianna's sales team. And it's always me. That's the producer. Now, if you set this up, you don't have to fill in these four fields, these two fields, these, these two fields, okay? So that's what I mean by setting up your um, user option field defaults. If you set this up, now every time I come in here and I add, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go back up to find a client. Here's Brantley to construction. I can go into the opportunity section. Oh, there's already one. I'll add another one. Um, click on add and oh, I have to sign out of Epic. Sorry. Whenever you do user options, you have to sign out of Epic so that it refreshes all your user options and then sign back in. This would have all pre-filled, this would have all pre-filled, this would pre-fill, and then I don't have to fill in. I only have to fill in this one, two. These two are optional if you want them. Three, I want them. Four or five, six, okay? So I only have to fill in six fields as a producer. If I want to move my opportunity, let me move this opportunity through stages, I just click on actions and I change the stage. And I'm going to change the stage to the next one and I'm at the top stage. So, you know, I could change it to this if I lose it, but normally you'd be changing it and going through the stages in order, okay? So whatever the stage is, you can update the values if you realize it's gonna be more than 7,000 or less than 7,000. 
So I'll click out of that. I'm going to discard those changes. But this is how you change the stage. This is how you close it. And when I close it, I have to say whether I won or lost. If I win it, everybody's happy, and I'll say the day's date. If I lose it, again, I'm going to track the reasons. Okay. If I close it, let me close it and pretend I want it. So I won this one, and I want it today, and I'm going to close it. I would put this one in the background. I like to put any, uh, any activity that I'm not going to follow up on or I'm not going to put a note in, I like to put that in the background. Because what that means is I can just use it for reports and it doesn't pop in the middle of my workflow. Okay. Now, if I wanted to go back to Brantley Construction because for some reason, here's my close, where's my, let's search through my closed opportunities, closed status, my close one. Okay, if I want to reopen this one, it's just actions reopen. If I want to renew it and work on it next year, it's actions renew. Okay, so that is the workflow there. Um, I am going to open it up right. Oh, I'll show you the reports and then I'll open it up. So, again, the reason I'm clicking on this is because instead of going all the way back to my home screen, this is a split icon. This is the, it mirrors the navigation panel that I had when I was on the home screen. So I'm going to go to reports and marketing, and I'm going to show you where the reports are located. So these are called opportunity reports. You've got four of them, but they've got two different layouts and options. Okay. So here's where your four reports are. As any other Epic report, when you go into it, you can add criteria. You can take criteria out, and in the layout, you can change your sorts or how you want it to look at. In the delivery options, you have the choice of putting it on a home base, having it emailed every Monday, the first of the month, or you can give it to somebody else in their My Reports and let them work on it. Okay, same thing with any kind of report in Epic. Okay, so I am going to go back to, maybe not, okay, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and Open it up for questions. Oh, let me talk about the next steps. Then I'll open it up for questions. Okay, so the ways we can help your agency with sales automation is we can you know, help you with your migration if you're going from a source system like TAM or AMS 360, Hawksoft, or QQ Catalyst to Epic. We can help you with that. You've got decisions along the way to make. We can help you make those decisions and tell you what the consequences of your decision will be. Um, applied Epic optimization. So if you've been on Epic six months, one year, five years, 10 years, we can help you optimize the system. And usually what I ask you is, if you haven't gone in there and changed it after every major update, so the big major updates are always the year, like 2019, 2020, 2021. In 2017, they had two, so they had to do 2017 and 2017 R2. So if you haven't updated your workflows or your settings since then, I invite you to go back into configure and question all the decisions you made back then. Now that you understand the software and you've been using it for a while, you may have different decisions than you originally made, okay? We offer auditing services. Whenever you change workflows, procedures, or how you're going to track things, you want to make sure that people are following it. It takes at least six weeks to pick up a new habit. It takes eight weeks to break an old habit. So to make sure in that six to eight week time frame that people are doing what you've asked them to do, you should be auditing. And you can audit from use, running reports. That's a holistic point of view. And then you can audit by drilling down into individual accounts and individual policies to see what's going on. If you don't have the time to audit, um, we also offer auditing services. So workflow development, if you haven't looked at your workflows for a while, we can help you with that. The way we like to do our workflows is to do a flow chart so everyone sees the process from a very high level. And then we can either do written instructions or written instructions with detailed screenshots, depending on the level if you have a lot of new hires or a lot of new people. Okay. And then report automation. If you need help in setting up your reports and automating that, we can also do that. I left my agency six years ago. 
and they are still sending reports out under my name because no one wants to set up 150 reports that are already automated. Okay. Other next steps, other agency consulting engagements. We can help you with configuration and your setup. Okay. We can help train your producers on their sales automation workflow and how to work their activities, how to drag and drop attachments, where to do them. Okay. So I am going to turn it back to Kelly. Hi, yes, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one being, how would this help a marketing person or team to put, a pe to put people in the correct drip marketing campaigns? So I'm not sure this can really help with the marketing campaign unless you're trying to track all the prospects that are in different stages or if you're trying to go after the ones that you've lost. So if you're trying to go after the ones that you lost, it would make sense to put them in a drip campaign just to keep your name in front of them. If they're a prospect, it would also make sense to do that so that you can um, have them develop recognition of your agency. But you would have to pull out a marketing report to see what accounts are being done, and then you would have to import them into the marketing area. Or let me go back to, um, let me switch back to, Hold on. Let me put back to reports. And you can't do it off of these reports, but you can do it off of policy based reports. So if you track all of your prospects in here right now, you want to do some sort of marketing drip campaign, you could do it here at the bottom of any policy based report or account based report. You have your marketing options here. And you can either generate a letter. And then what you want to do is pick what letter you're using. Okay, maybe a marketing letter, what paper you want it to go out on, um, and attach a copy to the account. You could add an activity to have people follow up on. You could do sticky notes on top of the accounts to have them remind them to do something. But this is the only way that you can do it internally in Epic for a drip campaign. Otherwise, what you're probably going to have to do is export the list of prospects or leads that you're working on into whatever campaign system you're using. Other questions? Yes, is there a way to turn off just the renewal pipeline on the home screen? Um, you know what? I would have to play around with that. I don't think you can. I think it'll just be, if you don't use it, it'll just be blank because there's no area that you can say only show me certain areas. So in my case, mine's just blank because I didn't set up any renewal targets and I didn't set up, I didn't put any opportunities in for renewals. Okay, and our next question, if the producers are splitting commissions, does the dashboard reflect the commissions proportionately per producer or does it factor it in as a total? No, that is not factored in. Um, the place that uh, runs what the producer's commission will be is actually on the, let me see if I can pull this up. That is held at the policy level on the line on the PRBR tab. So you wouldn't be able to do that in sales opportunities, which you would probably want to do on that one. So just so everybody knows when I say PR, BR tab, I'm talking about this area. This is the area that controls producer commissions and payables, and producer expense. Um, in the opportunity area, you don't really have something. What you would have to do is list both of them on um, the same opportunity or have both of them set up the opportunity. So you might have two opportunities here, one for me and one for Kelly if we're splitting this. We would have to divide the revenue between us. So if the revenue is nine thousand, we'd each have to put forty five hundred for our goal. Okay. And can you change the code um, that opens when you add an opportunity? So instead sure. of the ADOP, can you change it to like the Q U O R? Sure. So in configure, in activities. You have what we call events and codes. And last time I counted, I think there were 191 events that Epic has. They keep adding every edition. Okay, so here's how that works. When you add an opportunity, we have it generating an activity. 
That's what we mean by an activity pops open. Okay, you would make it required. That means you can't blow by it. You have to answer it. And then you would set up what activity you want. So if you don't want ADOP, now I have some clients that have one for, bon one for benefits, one for commercial lines, one for personal lines, but you can put whatever you want here. All you have to do is open that up. You can delete the ones you don't want to use, and then you can add whatever you have in here. If you don't have one that you like, what you want to do is you want to go into codes first and you want to create the code. Okay, if you don't find one you like, and if you're looking for codes, look at your active codes. Come up here. Whoops. Every time I click on that bar, it takes it away. You want to look at your active code. Oops, okay. Look at your active codes and click on the little hyperlink at the top here, which I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to fall for it twice. But there's a, a little link at the top here that says inactive, include inactive, exclude inactive. You want to look at all your codes. Don't create another code if you already cleaned up all your codes, okay? Look at your inactive codes, see if there's one you can use. If there isn't, you can create a new code. So if I wanted to create something like sale, you know, and then I can put my description in. And with any code that you set up in Epic, when you click on this magnifying glass, you can add merge variables so they don't have to type it. So if you always want them to put um, the policy description, policy type, if you always want them to put the uh, effective date, if you always want to put something in here, go through these and see what you want and then set that up. Make that, I'm going to put this sales code in, I'm just going to say sale for right now, and I'm going to click on finish, and then when I add that to the events, okay, so add opportunity, I'm going to add, oh, I was open, so it's not going to do that, hold on for a second, I'm going to take these two off, okay, so I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to get rid of that one, yes, I'm going to get rid of that one. Yes, I'm going to make it required so it pops open. And then I'm going to add the new opportunity, which we called sales. And I'm going to make that the default. So now what happens when you add an opportunity, you're going to get sale because that's my new code. And sales, the one I'm going to keep open from start to finish, because this is what you're going to get when you're doing it. You're going to get add opportunity. That's the first first one that opens. Okay, I'm going to discard the changes right now. And then you're going to get, um, let's see what else you can do. You're going to get a couple other ones here. When you close the opportunity, when you issue the opportunity, let's see what other ones will I get. And there's like three more that I will get here. And the same thing goes when you reopen an opportunity, you get this code. If this is not the one you want, all you have to do is change it. If you have more than one choice, whenever you set up an opportunity, if you have more than one choice, uncheck that default. Because when you check the default, that means it opens with it. And you get, when people see a choice in there, they don't make another choice. They don't click on the drop down to see if there's any more choices. So whenever you have more than one activity, you want to uncheck that box. So let me show you an example. I have more than one activity when I endorse advised an existing line. I have three, an audit, premium audit, a real change, it's an endorsement that's going to the carrier and an internal correction that doesn't need to go anywhere. I uncheck that default box. That way it comes up blank. And now you have to click on the drop down and you have to pick the correct one. Otherwise, you're going to go right to audit and you're going to pick that because it filled in. Okay. Good question. Great. And lastly, so does changing the opportunity reports only change? the reports in that, in that person's, on that person's side, or does it change it for everybody? If you modify the report. So if you modify the report, like, like anywhere else in Epic, if you modify a report and it's on their home base, what you have to do when you do the new report, it doesn't push the new report out. You have to actually go into here and you have to go to their home base and you have to say, what report do I have on here? Let's see, report quick do. And whatever report they have on here, you have to delete and then add the new one back. So I would delete that old report, old opportunity report. I would go back into reports. I would go back into opportunities. And now I would go back to delivering them that report back to their, um, or the copy report to 
back to their user report and I'll give it back to John. Okay, and then click finish and then I'll put it on John's, um, oh, this one puts it on John's My Report, sorry. If I wanna put it on his home base, I would want to uh, copy report to his uh, My Reports and then I would pick John and that would go to his My Reports. Great, okay. Depends on how you wanna do this. And then the last question is, we were looking to make opportunities available to all team members, almost like work groups. Is that an option? Yeah, you can do that. And that's in your security settings again. Okay, so you have to let people to go into configure and I go into security settings. A couple of things you have to do. I would create a security group. Whenever you're giving security settings, you don't wanna go into the users and pick one of the users and give them rights because you're not gonna remember who you gave rights to do what, okay? So it'd be easier to set up a group and you can call it sales, okay? And then go into program access and look for that area. So if I wanna give them air, um, um, opportunities, which are in insured clients and in um, prospective clients. So let me start with prospective clients. And I'm gonna give them opportunities. I can click on this little link here and grant all. Okay, so first of all, that lets them see that opportunities on prospective clients. I'm gonna to have to also do it for insured clients as well. So that gives them that area. And then on their home screen, I have to give them rights to see other people's um, stuff. So you can have, yeah, you can have the whole team see the same thing. You just have to set it up so they can do it. Which reminds me, I didn't show you how to set up the, um, let me just show you how to set up the employee. So for your producers, you want to go into the employee file. Okay. And this is a wild card in Epic. If you don't know it, do the lookup code. That's the Epic lookup code. Hit the space bar and then do locate. As long as there's less than 500, it'll come up with everything on the list. These are all employees of applied if you recognize some of the names of people you've dealt with. So I'm going to go into um, Chad Aaron's, one of the implementation leads, and I'm going to go to his account detail. And then I'm going to go to sales. This is a tab you might not have set up before. Sales managers get to see everybody on the team. Sales executives get to see the whole office. If you click on this, you get to tell them which sales team. So if you want everyone that's part of Thunder sales team to see it, set them all up over here, okay? Your sales target. Chad has to hit, he's part of whatever sales team. This is the year 2021. He has to hit premium of X number of dollars. He has to hit revenue of X number of dollars. These are where you set up the goals. And this is for new business. And then you would do one for renewal business if you're going to do renewal business as well. So this is what they're aiming for. This will do your, set up your target, okay? If I had set this up before, you would see it here. This would say 100,000 and you would see year to date as they do the new business. So if I go back to my employee file, then the next thing I wanna do is I want to make sure that you want to view others. This is how you give people rights to view others' work items. So if you have a group like accounting that does billing or download, this is this. If you want others to see opportunities, you set them up. So if you want everyone in the same sales team to see each other's opportunities, set it up here. If you want the CSR to be able to see the opportunities of the producers they work with, set it up here. Okay. Great. Back to you. <laughs> It looks like the last question we have is, have you seen many agencies use the associated items or attachments within opportunities? And if so, how are they using it? Well, they're using it by dragging and dropping into the attachment section. Let me go back to my opportunities. Just like you do a policy or an activity, you just drag and drop on top of this, okay? Or if you want to put it in this section, you can open this up and click on add. And if it's in your email, you can pull up your email. If it's existing client file, that in Epic language always means attachments in that Chrome or construction file since I'm in there. If you say existing file, that always means whatever's on your desktop, share drive, hard drive, pictures, okay? Any 
thing that you share on your computer. So you can always attach that way, you can drag and drop that way. Um, the reason that they're dragging and dropping onto the opportunity right now is because there probably is not a policy open right now. You could, if your practice is to always drag to an, um, an activity, you would be access activity, my open activities and ADOP, I'd be drag and dropping on that. And then it would say yes, there's attachments. Okay, so you have to decide, don't give them choices, pick one area that you want them to do it in, and that's what you do every time. If you give them three choices, you might have them all over the place and no one will be able to find them. Gotcha. Well, it looks like that is all the time we have for questions today. Um, if we did not get to your question or if you have additional ones that you, um, that you think of, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer any of those questions that you have. And uh, thank you, Aurora, for a great presentation. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. We hope that today's content has been helpful with understanding how you can utilize sales automation to your agency's advantage. Um, if you would like to learn more about Kitex IT and consulting services, please feel free to reach out using any of the ways listed here. And we'd be happy to set up a complimentary consultation with you to talk with, to you about your technology or consulting needs. As mentioned earlier, you will receive a follow-up email that will include today's recording in a few days. And if you could just take a moment to complete a brief survey, we'd really appreciate your feedback. Thank you again for spending time with us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.